Today on The Daily Dose, the Connecticut Compromise. After Britain's 1781 surrender at Yorktown, by 1786, it became increasingly apparent that the Articles of Confederation would prove insufficient to govern a young nation. In response, on May 25, 1787, delegates representing every state except Rhode Island convened at Philadelphia, crafting a government model of checks and balances that nearly derailed over the issue of equal representation. At issue were disparities in state populations, prompting high population states to argue that representation in Congress should be proportional to a state's population, while smaller states with lower populations demanded equal representation in Congress. Known alternatively as the Great Compromise of 1787 or the Sherman Compromise, the Connecticut Compromise was first proposed by Connecticut delegates Roger Sherman and Oliver Ellsworth, which when agreed upon established two bicameral legislatures in Congress, with the number of members elected to the House of Representatives based on a state's total population, while members of the Senate ensured equal representation in all states by electing two senators per state, regardless of a given state's population. The original plan obliged state legislators to choose their senators, while the 1913-17th Amendment to the Constitution handed senatorial election power to the people. Approved by a narrow margin on July 23, 1787, as the United States grew in population and demographics over the coming years, however, the Connecticut Compromise inadvertently handed states with smaller populations a disproportionately larger voice in Congress, giving least populated states like Wyoming an advantage over much larger states like California, which touts a population some 68 times greater than Wyoming's, allowing smaller states to capture disproportionate attention in federal funding, such as hog farming in Iowa or mining interests in West Virginia. It also has drifted from the Founding Fathers' original thinking within the Electoral College used in the election of presidents, since the number of electoral votes designated to a state based on a state's combined number of representatives in both chambers of Congress, lending further power bias to smaller states over larger ones. Despite these disparities of power, the Great Compromise remains protected by Article 5 of the Constitution which maintains that no state can lose its equal representation in the Senate without that state's permission, making the Connecticut Compromise an unequal yet lasting part of constitutional law. And there you have it, the Connecticut Compromise. Today on The Daily Dose. Get your nerd on with The Daily Dose. And if you enjoyed today's episode, share the link with a friend or colleague so that they too can learn something new every day.